will lie to us from that podium. I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. The First Amendment does not give anyone the right to riot. The First Amendment does not give anyone the right to loot. The First Amendment doesn't give anyone the right to burn down buildings. The First Amendment does not give anyone the right to deface property. And it does not give anyone the right to assault private citizens and to assault police officers. The First Amendment, however, does give you the right to peaceably assemble. And the greatest example that we have seen of peaceful protest, an absolute embodiment of the First Amendment, is the March on Washington. On August 28, 1963, a quarter of a million Americans gathered at the Lincoln Memorial and peacefully made a powerful march and a powerful point that all Americans should be treated equally. That racial discrimination was unacceptable, abhorrent, and that it needed to be rectified. And in the famous I Have a Dream speech by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, he said this, we must not allow our creative protest to, de to, de excuse me, to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. And soul force is exactly what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. met the nation with when he said this, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. Important words, important actions from an American hero who contributed to making this nation the greatest on earth. With that in mind, we must remember to recognize the lives lost, the passing of George Floyd, who was killed unjustly in a, in a horrific video. We are all Americans. We must come together. We must unify. And we must have law and order. And with that, I'll take questions. You mentioned Dr. King, and you likely would not have approved of what took place on Monday evening across the White House, as you probably know. Um, if the White House president and his team had to do it all over again, would you have gassed and pummeled protesters to clear the parts of the president got the foot along? So let me first address no tear gas was used and no rubber bullets were used. So again, no tear gas was used, no rubber bullets were used. Let me, let me, let me back up and... She was gassed. Others say they were tear gassed in that area. Well, no one was tear gassed. Let me make that clear. That's been confirmed by DOD and by Park Services as well. So let me go back and address what happened because there's been a lot of misreporting. Um, first, I would note that these protests that were going on um, in the morning, AG Barr had determined that we needed to expand the perimeter by one block on each side. Um, he was surprised, AG Barr, when he arrived at the White House to see that that perimeter had not been moved. Um, so he said that we needed to get going with moving that perimeter. He told the officers that out there. Uh, that was late afternoon. So that decision was made in the morning, first of all. Uh, the protesters were told three times over loudspeaker that they needed to move. And what happened was it grew increasingly unruly. There were projectiles being thrown at officers, frozen water bottles were being thrown at officers, um, various other projectiles, and the officers had no other choice than in that moment um, to act and make sure that they were safe and that the perimeter was pushed back because as we all know, a church was burning in that very area the night before. Um, so the appropriate action was taken. It was taken. It was burning the night before, which which would which, um, enforced the decision to move the perimeter on each side by a block so that church would no longer be in harm's way by the rioters. But it's absolutely uncalled for to throw bricks, absolutely uncalled for to throw water bottles that are frozen at police officers. Really that the vast majority of those protesters were doing so peacefully and that many of them did not hear those and were simply just pushed out of the way, just forced out, pummeled out of the way by their fellow Americans, police officers. Uh, you sent in uh, members of the military uh, to, to deal with this. I mean, what do you say to Americans who look at what happened on Monday and find that to be appalling? Well, let me know if the National Guard was utilized across Washington, D.C. Um, the military was not. Let me know if the National Guard was utilized across Washington, D.C. Um, the military was not. There is a distinction. I would say that it is uncalled for to throw bricks at officers, uncalled for to throw frozen water bottles at officers. And they also had received intelligence that there were calls for violence against police officers, and they found caches of glass bottles, baseball bats, and metal poles hidden along the streets. When an officer is at risk, they have the right to defend themselves. They did so peacefully. Uh, no one had, there were no fatalities, no severe injuries. Um, to protect the lives of officers, they have a right to defend and to protect themselves. Next question. I think I've, Sarah used to always joke about two questions Tuesday. I think sometimes I get four or five questions Wednesday. I just want to make sure that you have a problem with when they saw Monday and have a chance to have that addressed. I mean, what do you say to Americans who are just outraged by what they saw? What I would say, I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. They didn't use tear gas. They didn't use, they moved them out. Now, when I went, I didn't say, oh, move them out. I didn't know who was there. I figured I was going to walk over the church very nearby. He also denied staging the photo op because he was being ridiculed for hiding out in the White House bunker last Friday never to lie to us from that podium. I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. Oh. Well, let me know if the National Guard was utilized across Washington, D.C. Um, the military was not. There is a distinction, and I would say that it is uncalled for to throw bricks at officers, perceived intelligence, that there were calls for violence against police officers, and the officers had no other choice than in that moment um, to act and make sure that they were safe and that the perimeter was pushed back, because as we all know, a church was burning in that very area. I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. It was, taken, it was burning the night before, which, 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 which um, enforced the decision to move the perimeter on each side by a block so that church would no longer be in harm's way by the rioters. But it's absolutely uncalled for to throw bricks, absolutely uncalled for to throw water bottles that are frozen out police officers. Feeling that the vast majority of those protesters were doing so peacefully and were simply just pushed out of the way, just forced out, pummeled out of the way by their fellow American police officers who sent in uh, members of the military uh, to, to deal with this. I mean, what do you say to Americans who look at what happened on Monday and find that to be appalling? Well, let me know if the National Guard was utilized across Washington, D.C. Um, the military was not. There is a distinction. I would say that it is uncalled for to throw bricks at officers, uncalled for to throw frozen water bottles at officers, and they also had received intelligence that there were calls for violence against police officers, and they found caches of glass bottles, baseball bats, and metal poles hidden along the streets. When an officer is at risk, they have the right to defend themselves. They did so peacefully. Uh, no one had, there were no fatalities, no severe injuries. Um, to protect the lives of officers,
officers, they have a right to defend and to protect themselves. Next question. I think I've, that Sarah used to always joke about two question Tuesday. I think sometimes I get four or five questions Wednesday. I'm pretty sure that the people who have a problem with what they saw on Monday have a chance to have that addressed. I mean, what do you say to Americans who are just outraged by what they saw? What I would say is police officers are out on the front lines. They're defending and protecting you as you come into this building each and every day, Jen. We owe them honor. We owe them respect. And when they are under attack, they have the ability to defend themselves. See. So it's a very good question. The president has the sole authority to invoke the Insurrection Act. It is definitely a tool within his power. This president has one singular aim. It is protecting America's streets. We cannot have burning churches. We cannot have police officers who are shot. We cannot have businesses that are looted and destroyed. The Insurrection Act is a tool available. The president has the sole authority. Um, and if needed, he will use it. But at this time, he's relying on surging the streets with National Guard. It's worked to great effect here in D.C. and in Minnesota as well.